Let's take a look at some sound design examples using the Moog Siren. Let's start this off with creating a kick drum sound. This is what I have right now. Let's bring the level down on that first VCO. I'm going to bring it all the way down so we don't have any more signal. VCO2 is also all the way down. We're going to generate the sound using the filter's self oscillation. So I'll set the filter cutoff to a lower value and up the resonance. And at a high enough value, we start to hear this sine wave tone. Let's now modulate the filter cutoff with the envelope and this dial sets the amount. This is the envelope we're working with. I'm going to set the attack all the way down. Sustain all the way down. Let's turn off the release and set the DK approximately to about here. For the amp envelope, let's give it some release. Sustain all the way down. This is now the release parameter. Let's now set the DK. Slightly longer than the filter envelope. Maybe the sustain can be up a bit. Now for that pitch modulation DK, I'm going to bring it down to a point where we don't really hear the pitch modulation and it starts to become more like the punch of a kick drum. I'll pitch down the cutoff so it's more in the kick drum register. I'll also bring down the envelope modulation amount so it's a bit more subtle. And now we get that nice mellow kick drum tone. Alright, so the tonality is pretty decent, but it still sounds a bit weak. So in my DAW here, I'm going to add some further post-processing. I'm going to use this drum bus effect in Ableton Live. Works great on a kick drum. Up the drive a bit. Add some compression. And now we hear a lot more of that kick drum. So that's how to create a kick drum on the Moog Siren. Now let's see how to create a hard sync lead tone using the Moog Siren. Now to create the hard sync effect, we need to turn on that hard sync feature. So we can hold down the glide button and twist the VCO2 level up. And now sync is on. So oscillator 2 is synced to oscillator 1. So we can bring the level down on oscillator 1 and up the level on oscillator 2. And now when I change the pitch on oscillator 2, we can hear that sync screen tonality. Let's now set up some modulation of this effect. I'm going to use this mod section here. I'll set the VCO LFO amount up. I'm going to hold down glide and twist the LFO rate. And that sets the LFO shape to the filter envelope. So now the envelope here is going to affect the oscillator's pitch. I only want to affect the VCO2. So there's a VCO2 only button here, which I'm going to engage. And now only oscillator 2's pitch is going to get modulated with the filter envelope. Let's shape the envelope. Attack all the way down, sustain all the way down, and let's up the decay. Sounds pretty cool. Let's try this with a square wave on VCO2. So that's the hard sync sound on the Moog Siren. Let's now see how to create some feedback effects. To do this, we will have to take the output of the synth and plug it back into its input. I'm using a standard quarter inch patch cable here. Now obviously you can't monitor through that output anymore, but there's still a headphone output and you can use that to monitor the signal. We can control that feedback level by holding down glide and twisting the oscillator one mix level here. And that's pretty much it. Let's have a listen to this. So that's with the low pass filter engaged. You can play with the feedback amount, bring in the second oscillator, 
pitch that differently. Modulate the filter cutoff. Resonance tends to counter that feedback. So the lower your resonance value is, the more of the feedback effect you're gonna hear. So those are three examples of sound design using the Moog Siren. Stay tuned for more.